Hello everyone, welcome back to 3D Printing Doctor. In this video, we will take a look at Fillet Dryer S2 from Sumo Manufacturer. They just released their Kickstarter campaign for this filament drying machine. And we will take a look at it in detail. I'm going to show you guys the menu buttons and everything, some of the test prints I have done too. And we will compare this with the old version, Fillet Dryer S1 as well. So let's dive in. So I already put the filament roll in there. This is the front touch screen in here, on off button. This is the output of the filament that we can pull it out. And this is the back of the machine. And this is where, they, where we plug the power in. And the first thing I noticed, there is no hinge here, so it opens and closes. I really wanted to have a hinge here so that I can close it while it's heating, but there's no stopping mechanism in there. Just one thing to notice. So this is fully hinged and as you guys can see towards the bottom of it, it doesn't touch to the table So the heat doesn't go through your table. So let's run it. So first I always try to push it with one touch You can click the you, you can hear the sound But it wasn't opening and closing what you needed to do like two times touch very fast See it ons off on off that's something to consider let me click and open it, see all these data here. This portion is not touchable, only these buttons are touchable. So when we click set, it goes through the bullets one by one and we can change things. So let's go to the PV present value, I assume. It is not changeable, but when you click these interchanges between Fahrenheit and Celsius, what I realize is when you do this, it takes time to change for the present value, but um, set value is changing faster than that. So it's 37, 99 Fahrenheit. Set value immediately changed, but pri uh, per present value takes time to change. The other thing that I was really wanted to see is the humidity. And we have this humidity meter, meter here regarding the percentage right now. It's 33% 33 humidity. I'm gonna bring it back to the Celsius because I like Celsius more. Set value is basically the set value based on the material it changes also, you can change it too. The maximum value, if if I remember correctly, is 70 Celsius, right in here, yep. Uh, by the way, if you press and hold these buttons, it doesn't change it uh, different increments, so you just need to go down by hand. Set time is here in all the time. Um, let's go to the upest value. The highest value was... Let's go, 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 go to the highest value. I think it will hit 99 and go back. Yeah, it can go back to 99. I could actually go down from here, from one to the back, but it can go up to 99 hours. I assume everything is tested for this machine to operate at 99 for 99 hours. So let's go to the material. Material. If you change the material, actually, let's go there. If you change the material, the set temperature changes based on material as well. And if you um, change the set temperature within material, let's say I set the PET G to 70 Celsius, just, just for just checking it out. Let's set the PET G for 70 Celsius and close the machine. I'm going to unplug it and plug it back again. plug it back again so it, it continues from where you left off so just let you know if you go there and change these values for ABS, PLA, PA, PC and everything it will remember your values and there's this LED version over here it goes on and run um, after working 36 hours my LED stopped working that's something to consider I guess for the manufacturer so what happens is I'm going to put here a video of it while it's working to the corner of the screen. So I guess you can see that in run, there's a green uh, thing goes in here, rotates. When it's open, there's only green glow, but mine is gone. So even if I hit the run, it's not working anymore. I'm sad about that. So compared to the previous one, which is here, this is a big jump with all the data and everything. Because in the previous one, we only have set value, present value and the time. And the bottom section did not have heater and it's a box design, which is which was good, which was good. But this one is a big jump because we have many 
opportunities here, material selection and also humidity meter inside integrated. It's pretty nice. It has better communication with the user, with the LEDs and everything. And this has 360 degree heater module. So let's look at it together. So as you guys can see, the interior, let me remove my filament. So interior has 360 degree heaters. So you can see that there's one heater here and one heater on the hood as well. So there are two heaters. So when you close it up, it is 360 degree heating element. So, which is great, which balances it out. I, I like it compared to the previous one. When we look at it in detail, you can see that there is a sign over here showing it is hot. And this white thing is the heating element on top of the aluminum. And these two things over here are the rollers where your filament rolls on. And that's it. And the top section is like that. And here is our hole for pulling the filament. That's pretty much it. Pretty decent, simple design and I like it. Um, there's no latch in here as I mentioned in the beginning of the video that I really wanted. I just wanna click and lock everything. Other than that, it's a very big jump from the first version over here to the Filet Dry S2. Um, I did some moist filament test. Uh, I know that I have this purple filament that's the very stubborn, the highest moisture filament I have ever get in my life. Um, it's really pain in the butt and it, it always get moist and causes this kind of problems for printing as you guys can see. That moist filament was really bad. It helped me a lot to drop the moisture of the filament a lot. You guys can see the difference between these two prints. So much holes, very few holes. So it drops it. Um, I'm not going to make this like a quantified uh, experiment because this filament is really really outlier It has so many moisture on it But even though with high moisture filament it did a really great job to reduce the moisture on it with this advanced design with 360 degree heating and you can select the heating above 55 with previously it was maximum 55 you can go to the 70 Celsius I think it does a really good job compared to the previous model. Thank you guys for watching this video. As I showed you in detail, this is a very big step for Sumo from Filet Dryer S1 to Filet Dryer S2. I think they listened to all the customers and they improved based on the feedbacks. Now we have a humidity sensor, more user-friendly screen. It is touch screen as well. More lights, it communicates better, it beeps <laughs> better. And yeah, it is way improved than the Filet Dryer S1. And also it has like 360 degree heating element as well. So based on my review, I think it's a really great machine. As I already told you, it's a big jump from Filet Dryer S1 to S2. Um, it has everything you need. It does the adjustment based on the material you put in as well. I think after this one, we will use our ovens less. So people will not complain about that much. So I think in addition to all these improvements, I would still prefer a latch here so that I can close this and lock it. I don't know why, but I want that latch here. <laughs> uh, the other thing, I think since this is like a development product, they send us to, uh, they send us for review first. The, the ones that are released after the Kickstarter campaign is going to be improved based on our feedbacks as well. My LED ring start, my LED ring stopped working after 36 hours. I think that's a kind of bug or a mistake in the machine. Maybe I sit down and open and take a look at the inside as well. But that LED ring misfunction was the only thing that I've seen after using it like around 100 hours so far. It does the job. It, it basically dehumidifies the filament and that is what it's built for. So, I like it. Yeah, this is all my words for this machine, for this review video. What do you guys think? Uh, have you guys get a chance to use it? I know that they are going to release the rest of the machines after the Kickstarter campaign, but did you get, did you get one before that? In that case, did you like it? What are your impressions? Uh, comment down below. Let's discuss. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, comment them as well. I will try to answer as much as I can. And all the details are in the description down below, including their Kickstarter link. So if you want to get one, check out that Kickstarter link. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe to 3D Printing Doctor and see you guys in the next video.